Hi, welcome to the Mortis and Tenon YouTube channel. Um, I want to show you how I'm going to clean up this uh, Stanley number no. four, uh, this used hand plane I picked up uh, for a friend of mine for a gift. Um, I picked through the pile and was looking at uh, what was in good shape. Uh, the tote was in pretty decent shape. Everything was tight and snug. All the pieces were there. The iron wasn't worn uh, too far away. So I just did a general overall look and I picked the best example uh, from the pile. Um, and I'll show you how I take this apart and clean it. This shouldn't take too much at all. Um, and I'll show you the first thing I do. So when I'm dealing with metal body planes like this, um, first I'll, I'll take it apart. So this is the, the cap, uh, the, the frog. The, the iron is sitting on the frog. Take the cap off, pull that part right off. So it's got this lever and you can release it. And then you have the iron here, the primary iron, and the cap iron, and the second iron up on top. And what I'm going to be looking for with this is the condition of the edge, and it's actually pretty decent on this one. What I'm going to do first is set a square on there and just see if there's a little bit of camber or roundedness, which is what I want. And this has actually a really nice amount of it. It's not too much, but it's not too little. Um, so all I'm going to do is regrind this bevel, but I'm going to keep the same camber. It's the amount that I like. Um, so after I deal with this, after I take a look at that, then I'm going to look at the, the body here. Um, there's a sticker on here with some tape. I paid $42 for this plane, which is a pretty good deal because it's not going to take much work at all to get this going. And it'll be a really nice, nice plane. So I just slip under the sticker here and peel it off. Okay, so now that I have all the gunk cleaned off, um, well, peeled off, now I'm going to wipe it off with odorless mineral spirits. And then if I need to uh, a little bit more, then I can use xylene or toluene. Um, this is the active agent, I think, in um, Goo Gone. So you could use Goo Gone as well, but this is just the, the primary uh, remover for this kind of tape residue and stuff like that. So this right now is just odorless mineral spirits. Just wiping the whole thing down. You can see a lot of the gunk coming off. It's turning all brown. This is not removing any finish at all. This is just removing tape residue and other grime. But it's not very aggressive at all. I'll just wipe down the rest of the plane and just clean it up. I don't get really picky about having my tools very pristine. So as long as they look pretty decent, I like patina on my tools, so I don't obsess about wiping every little facet and getting everything uh, perfect. This is just a quick wipe down. And then for any paint paint flex on there, any little uh, paint splatter, um, it's really common to find that on hand planes. Um, that is when the xylene really comes in handy. Um, this will dissolve nitrile gloves, so uh, beware of that. I try not to let it touch me. And this stuff is really nasty. Uh, if I could talk through a respirator, I would be wearing one right now, but uh, it's really nasty stuff. This will wipe a lot of the paint, uh, paint splatter right off. And if you have a stubborn part, 
Uh, you can always just take a razor blade and just pick right at that little area. Just pick it right off. So I finally have all of the, um, the paint cleaned off, the paint splatter, and it still has scratches and that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly uh, just scuff sand this with the maroon scotch Bright pad. And then that's going to kind of level out some of the irregularities. But I'm not really sanding much away, I'm just sort of scuffing the surface really lightly. I'm going to do that on the knob on the front and the tote in the back. Just give it a quick wipe, wipe the dust off. And then with a cloth, I'm going to wipe some, just one little gentle application of shellac just to spruce it up a little bit. This is going to leave a lot of patina, but it's going to give it just a little bit new, uh, a freshness. Often what happens when you when you apply the shellac, you'll see, oh, I missed a paint speck. I'm going to uh, clean that off. But there's always room to do that. You can just say, okay, well, let's clean it off. There. That looks good. So when you sand it with the maroon scotch bright, that really knocks the sheen down. And with the, the very small amount of shellac we've padded, it's still pretty matte. So if you wanted a little bit higher gloss to it, you could just put more shellac on. Or uh, what you can do, and I will do at the end, is I will uh, apply a little bit of paste wax with steel wool and buff it out to the sheen that I want. So that is all that I do for cleaning up the, the wooden parts of planes. Uh, on, on if it, it was very grimy, if it was really dark and black and I wanted to remove some, I could start with some alcohol, some denatured alcohol in the scotch Bright pad just to remove some of it, but uh, you don't necessarily need to strip all of it. Okay, so I was just about to show you uh, how to grind the bevel on my 6 inch grinder, and then the power went out. So, uh, it's a good thing we're uh, into hand tools here because we don't care about the power. Uh, so I just have a piece of sandpaper and I will be grinding the bevel this way. So I'm just going to first check and see where. Yep. So I have it all lined up. Um, this kind of uh, this kind of grinding jig uh, depends on the distance here, so I've kind of checked it and adjusted it forward and back this way in the jig to make sure that it's going to be giving me the angle that I want. Um, I checked the angle just with a simple gauge. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, using my fingers back here and pressing down in the front, and I can kind of rock back and forth a little bit to get the primary bevel. This is a 25 degree bevel that I'm putting on here. I'm just going to be looking for these, these scratch marks running this way to, to cover the entire bevel. So 
Okay, so now I have the primary bevel uh, ground or sanded on this using the jig. Um, so it's all the way across, all set to go. Now all I need to do is hone the edges. So I'm going to take off the jig. And in my honing, what I do is it's pretty simple. I only use two Japanese water stones. The red, that's a little bit coarser, and the white, that's the finest. So what I do with this um, is, I'll set this down here. So, okay. so I'll clamp this board down. This board just holds my, my stones in place. Um, I'll do a quick overview of this. To look at this process more in depth, uh, I would refer you to our Apprenticeship Foundation series where we spend a bunch of time talking about sharpening and I show you this whole process. But this is the basic rundown. So to get started on this, I will start by applying pressure right here. So you can see how I'm setting it on the edge and then tilting it down. You don't want to come down this way because all the cutting is right there in the edge. You want to make sure that that's nice and crisp. So I set this down this way and press here. And I press right at the top of the bevel. All the weight is here. And then the, my right hand is just drawing it back and forth. And what I'm going to be doing is checking to see that right along the edge is where all my pressure is. And so I want to see a nice, clean, uh, fresh scratch pattern right in there. It'll just, it should just look dull with this stone. So I'm not really lifting it. I'm not really using the ruler trick so much, but I am putting a lot of pressure right here and making sure that the back is really, really light. So it's kind of like a hybrid to the ruler trick. It's the idea of it without actually using a ruler or doing anything extreme. Just a lot of pressure. And the back of this was already very flat, so I don't have a lot to do here. So clear across, it's it's nice and um, smooth, it's nice and matte, it's not very shiny, that's exactly what I want to see in here. So I'm going to turn it over in the bevel and do the same exact thing. I have it set flat, now I'm going to press right above where the bevel is and rock up till I can feel that bevel. Now I'm just going to draw it front to back. My arms are locked. And I'm mostly rocking uh, front to back with my hips. So now I'm, all I'm really caring about is that very front edge. I just want to see a clean line there. That's where it cuts. Nothing else matters here. So what, the only thing I'm really being careful of is that I'm not rocking, tilting it too far up as I'm going. As long as you lock this in a certain angle, you can go front to back all day long. Just don't be rocking it this way, or you'll end up just rounding over your, your sharp edge. Okay. So I'm done with the redstone. It's, it's nice and matte all the way across the front edge. So I'm going to grab my, my second finer stone, which is the white stone. This is the, the uh, uh, Lee Valley sells this Kingstone basic starter set or something. Uh, I think that's what it's called. That's what I use. That's what I've been using for years, and I love it. I don't see any reason to change, so. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with the white stone.
this should be a little bit shinier so you can see uh, where the progress is. And since you've already done all the flattening, this you should be spending less time on the fine stone than on the coarse stone. Okay, that's pretty much set. And all I'm really concerned about is that little edge. Okay, then I'll just wipe it across my palm. Be very careful, obviously. Just to make sure that everything's nice and clean. And that should be shaving. Yep, got hairs coming off, so that's a nice... Uh, Nice edge, pretty quick in just a few minutes with a really simple setup. Okay, now that I have the, the iron honed, everything is all sharp and ready to go. I'm gonna slip the iron back on the cap iron, like this. Slide it forward so that when you slide the cap iron, it's not gonna hit that edge. All right, and then I'm gonna slide it, and I guess for general purposes, if you left it an eighth of an inch away, that's fine. For super fine smoothing, you may want it closer, but for this, for general purpose stuff, that's fine, just leave it there. I'll just hand tighten the screw, and then get a large screwdriver just to make it snug. So on this, you'll turn this over, and I always, I wanna pick this up and careful for the iron, uh, for the edge, you want to slip it down in there, like this. And then this little notch, it'll sit right in there, so now it's nice and tight. And there's a lateral adjustment over here, behind it, that'll shift it. And then you grab the cap, and tighten it down. If you, need, if you want the cap tighter, you can just tighten this screw just a little tiny bit and that'll make it a little bit tighter. You can sight down to bring it out just to, to see the edge coming out. You can also test for lateral adjustment with this and I'll get this set up and then we can take some shavings. So that's pretty much it. Um, what I will do is I will take a little bit of paste wax, a little bit of steel wool, wipe it down, um, and then I can buff it off with the cloth. And this plane is ready to go. It's making beautiful shavings. Uh, in total, it took me maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes worth of work. Um, and now it's ready for uh, any task you put it to. So if you, uh, are interested in hand tools this is a good route to go um, get it picking up an old Stanley start that way I use wooden hand planes normally they work beautifully I, I actually prefer them but um, old tools are really wonderful wonderful to work with so if you're interested in more uh, about hand tool woodworking uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel also check out mortisantendandmag.com where we have our magazine talking all about uh, building furniture uh, with with you know hand tools and uh, by hand and by eye, you know, by uh, the the power of uh, found right here and, and up here. So uh, it's a lot of fun working that way, uh, using tools that have always been used. And so that's what I'm excited about and I'm excited to share with you. So thanks for watching and uh, click subscribe. Thanks.